understand that this man, this police chief, was going there to that location with some hope of having a sexual relationship with a minor. The Attorney General's office was operating a sting against Chief Diebold for months. They say he was sending sexual messages and suggestive photos under the name Cute Cop For You. He believed he was communicating with a 14-year-old girl. We spoke with the Attorney General on the phone tonight. We've been telling you about Mike Diebold ever since his arm was blown off in a fireworks accident last June. The public rallied around him, raising thousands for his medical expenses. Diebold even invited our camera to his wedding and showed off his baby boy. Folks in Leechburg are taking the news hard. He was such a good man. He did good things for the city of Leechburg. And after his accident, everybody was all behind him. It's sort of incredible uh, to hear that and I would hope that uh, it's not true. At Diebold's home Friday night, the Christmas lights shine through the trees. But earlier in the day, agents from the AG's office raided the home and collected possible evidence. The Attorney General says Diebold violated the public's trust. That is a despicable act for anyone, and it's outrageous conduct for a police chief. Good evening. He went from police chief to accused felon, hero to an alleged predator. Mike Diebold lost his arm in a fireworks accident, lost his job shortly after that, and now lost his family after being charged with soliciting sex from a minor. Tonight, he is telling his story only on KDKA-TV. Marty Griffin sat down with him this afternoon. What are you doing? <laughs> it was a month ago, Mike Diebold in his home with his baby son, Kyle his uniform on the wall, ready to go back to work as Leechburg police chief. What a difference a month makes. Are you a bad guy? No. You a criminal? No. Thank you, gentlemen. Diebold became a heroic figure, his arm blown off in a tragic fireworks accident last summer. Yeah! Folks rallied around him. Hundreds donated tens of thousands of dollars toward his rehabilitation. Now he's facing several felonies, including allegations he used the Internet to solicit sex from a 14-year-old. It was an undercover state agent. Just horrible. I mean... Is it self-inflicted? Yeah. I've let everybody down, and, um, including myself. The characterization of you prior to this incident was hero. The characterization of you now is horrible despicable, right? Disgusting man. How do you wrap your arms around that, Mike? I don't think you can. You know this, right? You know this is out Oh, there. without a doubt. He was not allowed by his lawyers to discuss the criminal case, but he knows he faces jail time. He says he'd go to prison today to get his wife and son back. Everybody thinks that if you're in this situation, your biggest fear is you know, going to jail or you're going to prison. If Danielle and Kyle were at the end of that journey, you could send me away for 10 years. I mean, that, that, they're, the, they're the two most important things in my life. Mike's family, his wife, his son. We talked with Danielle last week. She's torn up. My whole world is just turned upside down. Mike says he watched her interview yesterday. He blames himself. If Danielle were here, I would drop to my knees, beg, for any type of forgiveness that I could ever receive. Beg to be allowed to be Kyle's father. I know I have destroyed the trust. Danielle D. Bolt has a PFA right now against her husband. Her concern, he could hurt her and others. He says, no way. I spoke with her today. She's terrified. There's a hearing on that PFA next week. Meantime, D. Bolt's prelim is tomorrow. He faces unlawful contact with a minor and criminal attempt to commit involuntary deviant sexual intercourse. He faces more than 20 years in prison. Serious, serious yeah. charges. This has to do with internet chat, with yes. text messages, yes. uh, the possible communication with a 14-year-old girl, who right. wasn't, wasn't necessarily the case. Did he comment about that at all? Okay, the criminal complaint suggests that he had conversations on multiple occasions with a 14-year-old. Uh, my sources on the investigation say they have multiple conversations with a person he believed was a 14-year-old, ended up being an undercover agent. Right. He won't comment directly, but his attorneys are convinced they can beat this case, and I'm told he's telling folks 
that he did not have those extensive conversations with a 14-year-old. Tomorrow's his prelim. That's when this first real heavy evidence will come out. Suspended police chief accused of soliciting sex from a teen now wants his soon-to-be ex-wife to pay him alimony. Megan Schiller is live with the details. And oh, by the way, he's in jail right now, too. Megan? That's right, Rick, and his wife said she's not feeling generous when it comes to giving him money for some of his legal fees and also for his day-to-day -day um, expenses that he might have in jail, whatever that might be. Now, this is the suspended Leechburg police chief, Mike Diebold. Like you said, he is currently sitting in jail. He filed a claim in court recently asking his wife, his estranged wife, to help him out to give him some money. Now, his wife said she's going to fight the claim. She does not want to give him any money, and she's, in fact, trying to speed up her divorce from from him. She told the Valley News Dispatch that she is furious over the news because she is working hard to support their two kids, paying a lot of money already in legal fees and they're living paycheck to paycheck. She said she doesn't want to give him money since her husband is currently awaiting trial on charges. He solicited online sex from an undercover agent posing as a juvenile. Diebold lost part of his left arm in a fireworks accident in June 2017, and they raised a lot of money. A lot of people chipped in in order to help him out, and he now wants the court to prohibit his wife from spending any of that money that people raised for him. KDKA did talk with his wife in the past right after her husband's arrest, and she said that that money is frozen and that it will not be used for legal fees and that she didn't even use it for his bail.